If you're thinking about coming to the south of Texas in the winter, we have some information for you. Look, this is Texas. This is South Texas in January. So windy. I mean, you can really hear me. As a full-time RV travel family from Canada, obviously in the winter, we are going south. And we really wanted to check out Texas this year as we heard that it was cheaper, but that it was windy. And so I figured, how windy could it be? Show me how windy it is. Are you gonna fly away? Huh? Are you gonna fly away? Me. Last year we spent our winter in Florida where we enjoyed hot weather. We're in South Texas today. We are stuck in the house because it's just crazy wind outside and the sandstorm that goes on your skin. we're going to cover everything that you should know if you're thinking about coming to Texas for the winter. If you're thinking about becoming a winter Texan, we have all the information that you need to make that decision. As well this is the hottest that it's been right now it's 24 degrees celsius but we can't go outside yeah. so after spending about four months in texas this year we are going to be going to florida in march we're just really looking for that good weather that you sacrifice your whole life you you sell your house you get an rv and you hit the road only to be cold or not be able to be at the beach in a bathing suit for example But when it comes to the price, it is much cheaper in Texas to park an RV. For example, right now we're in South Padre Island at the Isla Blanca County. For the month, we pay we're paying around seven to eight hundred dollars plus electricity, and we're on the ocean, about fifty feet from the ocean. Versus when we stayed in St. Augustine last March of 2023. We paid around, I want to say like 1800 US dollars for the month with electricity included. So it's essentially double the price in Florida. Plus the groceries are a lot cheaper in Texas. Gas is cheaper, propane is cheaper. Across the board, everything is cheaper in Texas. So we're able to save more money. We're able to put more money into our savings, which is great. Versus had we gone to Florida, we would have spent so much money to park the RV to get full hookups, especially if you go down to the Keys, where it's definitely warmer, but definitely more expensive. If you can even get a spot, you would spend at least $3,000 a month in Florida. So that's the sacrifice of coming to Texas. It's cheaper, but the weather is, it's not Florida. Texas is, is not Florida. One big benefit about Texas versus Florida to winter, to be a snowboard, is that oh, in have. Texas, Texas, it's less busy, it's less congested, it's less developed. Like even where we are in South Padre Island, like there's an area where there's absolutely nothing. There's just beach. And we didn't see so much of that in Florida. Florida's really developed, Florida's really busy. As here but in Texas, happened, wait. it's much more laid back. Another benefit of wintering in South of Texas or in Texas in general is that you're considered a winter Texan. economy the people relatively want people from the north people from Canada to come to stimulate the economy you feel welcomed it's, there's signs everywhere like welcome back winter Texans Mommy, you feel a sense of community that friendship the red? The red? that you have in, in Texas they're definitely 
that Southern hospitality is there. As in Florida, a lot of the locals do not want tourists coming into the areas as we, a lot of tourists will take up the state park reservation so like the locals can't get in there. So I think people in Florida are much more resistant towards travelers as here in Texas, they're really happy to have Canadians or Northern Americans come here to spend the money. I can say that I've noticed that difference. You see it in Facebook groups. You see it with the people you interact with. Everybody's really friendly. And it's like right away they know you're from Canada. Oh. <laughs> see them yet. Oh, but they're so spaced out. The oh, book of Benny and the Jets. Oh, but they're weird and they're wonderful. Benny, she's a really key. So like in everything there's advantages and disadvantages um, and in Texas we found that it's really really windy and beside the wind the weather overall so if it gets raining it's boring if it's windy it's like almost tornado so there's no like no medium I never imagined that Texas would be this windy like It. The wind is pushing at the door and then look, it just slams it shut. That's how windy it is. We've taken our gazebo down. It's just crazy how windy, windy it is. Everything's just flying. Because it's so windy from the beach, there's like a sandstorm that hits your face. Like I did a workout out here earlier and I kind of regret it because like my skin hurts from, from all the bad sand in the air because of all this wind. South Texas. The door is just trying to open. Like you can actually... I yeah, hit like you, all of my floors. Yeah. Pushing on the door right now. Yeah, you should come in now. <laughs> it's crazy. It's really, really... Wow. Oh. Woo. Oh. And look, it's going to close. Wow, not only clothes, it's like... Whoa, and it's like our RV is shaking. Sometimes, but You yeah. feel it, like we felt it all last night. It just keeps going. Apparently it's supposed to be like this for four days. Oh, the garbage fell over at the beach. Because it's so windy. Can you imagine exploring North America in a 45-foot fifth wheel with your toddler and German Shepherd dog? Join us, the Freedom Champagne family, as we take you on a virtual tour of our travels and show you what it's like to travel full-time as a family in an RV. Subscribe now to live vicariously through us and explore North America with us. From discovering new campgrounds and cities to meeting amazing people, Join us on this wild ride as we make memories that will last a lifetime. Subscribe and travel along with us today.